Hello, hello. Back again, day drinking. Thank you for being here. Oh, my hat's off. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, by popular demand, we are doing agave. Hey, forever home whiskey. Thanks for being here. You do some new distillers, or I'm not, that's the wrong word, new, new brands from old distillers. The exceptionally delicious Siete Leguas de Cadas. This is insane. The only good thing about mm, Sazerac being, oh, look at that gorgeous package. Uh oh, I better go get the one that's already open. I'm not open this. Very pretty looking one. Um, about Sazerac moving, well, maybe there are lots of good things, but anyway, we scored a pretty hefty load of this stuff. I'll get that at the end. I think we're gonna taste that last, or maybe we should taste it first. Let me go find that Siete. Hold on, hold on. We're doing a little store walk. Nice quick store walk here. Walking through the store. This is how we do it. Where did I put it? Um, just had it. I must have put it in the back. Hello, tequila. So, yeah, uh, we had a pretty impressive turnout for the raffle last week. I think it's the most people who have ever entered in a raffle. Um, without a doubt. Oh, there it is. Uh, and 222 individuals, 222, not surprised either. It was a pretty special bottle, obviously Thomas Handy, many, many different answers. All who answered something qualified. My favorite was from Bob who mentioned that he went to high school with Mr. Handy himself. Um, in any case, the winner of said raffle is none other than Mr. Chris P. D. Last name D. Chris D. You are the winner. Congratulations. Thank you for all your support. I'll put an order in for the handy shortly. And uh, we're going to start the day off with some decadas. This is a pretty unusual product uh, from easily... There you are, Mr. Deal. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. But uh, uh, 222 people... Uh, and your number was 42, the answer to everything, life. Uh, so this is the Siete Leguas. So what's interesting about this, uh, if you guys don't know, Siete Leguas is one of the most traditional distillers in the Highlands. They are, they are based in Atonilico, um, At. Totonilco, a Totonilco. Uh, they have two distilleries right next to each other. One is um, what I would call ultra traditional, and the other one is slightly more modern, but only slightly. And they're committed to making traditional tequilas of the highest order. I know you guys like to see the bottles, but this. I've got to adjust. I've always got to adjust here. Uh, and we got a pretty freaking awesome stash of it. This was so super hard to get. Something about the transition of Sazerac over, we were able to score a little bit of a little bit of a stock of it. Um, of course, it's very expensive for Blanco. Nobody can question that. But uh, yeah, we're hoping to get 11 bricks, but likely it's going to be like three bottles, Dan. So just buy this because we have it and it's awesome. So Siete Leguas, super traditional t distiller. Um, 1120 is the nom. Anytime you see 1120 on a bottle, it's going to be great. No question about that. What's 
more special about this than normal is that this is from a rare, not varietal because it is the same genetic plant as Weber, but a rare, rare expression, I should say, called Criollo. It's from a single estate. You see the name Criollo, Criollo, not Criollo, Criollo. And it mentions here Las Tro Trojes Jalisco, a single rancho. But what's interesting, once you open the package, you get this whole sort of story. Ah, Criollo. Thank you. Um, beautiful sort of packaging here. Se this is their 70th anniversary. Yeah, it's only been 70 years. That's a whole thing. So there are the agave right there. These are wild blue Weber. Okay? So, uh, I mean, that is so outrageously unusual and rare. 99.99999% uh, of all tequila production come from a single clonal selection. One, well, one or two clonal selections. This is so cool. And um, this is not that. So this is, and there is a subtle, although not likely very successful push to allow traditional varietals like Chato and other things that would have been totally normal to be included in tequila production 50, 60 years ago. Um, but this is a great example of what tequila might have tasted like yeah back in the 60s there you go in any case let's have a tasty tunes oh god and actually you know this bottle has been open for a little bit it was gorgeous to start but this thing loves air because it it, it started quite subtle i always expected this so this is 100 percent to hone press the regular siete leguas is a blend an unspecified blend of Tahona and uh, and uh, roller mill, uh, just like Tapatio. Um, it, Tapatio does that in one facility. Uh, Siete Leguas technically two separate buildings that are right next to each other. Um, but this is 100% Tahona Siete Leguas, which I was assumed would be mo much more intense. And it starts off pretty subtle. But the, with air, it really opens up. Who drank most of the bottle? Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, somebody. Might have been me. Um, in any case, the nose is so complex compared to most modern tequilas. It's not as roasty and savory as some of the lowland tequilas are. So if you're used to Cascawin, you might grab a glass of this and think, oh, it's pretty light flavored. But for most tequila drink tequila drinkers who aren't used to that super intense style, this is going to feel very powerfully flavored, especially with some oxygen. So the nose is, I mean, there is just an overt sweetness there. Like candy, sugar, almost like cotton candy. Behind that, yellow flowers, honeysuckles. And citrus. And some kind of, I, I wouldn't call it savory per se, but like a sweetened roasted pumpkin. Almost like a pumpkin pie note. But that's not right, because it doesn't have the cinnamon. There is some clove though. It's really, really gorgeous. Mmm. Mmm. And it's rich. And it's very fruity. Um, this is a very, very cool product. Of course, very expensive for Blanco, but do they mention the bricks for this batch? Perhaps in that 
pamphlet that I opened briefly, but um, not right on the outside. It says slow cooked, small stone ovens, three days, old world stone mill, same one since 1952, wild yeast, open tanks with fibers. This is the perfect tequila. And for $130, experiencing real tequila, I mean, this is a singular expression. This will never happen again. It's for, for, for the moment available, but not forever. God, it just keeps going. The nose is extremely complex. Come on down. Mmm. Mmm. Oops. In any case, that's really damn good. If you don't own Decadas, now's your chance. Only as total just happenstance. This was so super allocated back when Sazerac was staying with Young's, with RDC, I should say. So if you're going to get in tequila, this is not the product to get into it because it's going to ruin most everything else. But it is a sort of excellent introduction to authentic old school tequila because it is so approachable, so open and, and, uh, and interesting without being quite as intense and weird as some of the lowlanders, particularly from Cascaween, but also Amatitenia, which I'm going to taste a little bit later, which is really bonkers. Um, this is Paladar. So this is the brand of Eduardo Orndain, uh, the, the son of Jaime. This is, um, you know, this is, uh, this is Elano. So a traditional distiller in the lowlands, um, distilled by Eduardo. I love that it says his name right on the back. So this is really his stuff. All Blue Weber by law, proprietary blend of wild and uh, and proprietary yeasts, fermentation in pine vats. You'll you'll note whenever you're dealing with eleven oh nine, right there, that's Elano. Elano is the Orn Danes old school distillery, as opposed to eleven ten, which is their more modern distiller. Uh, Cascoin Tahona Blanco may be a good cheaper alternative to try first before you try. Um, so the big difference between, you know, the G, the, the Cascoin and, and the Decadas is Lowland versus Highland. G4 Madeira, I think is a close approximation to what Decadas is doing. If you can still find it, we're, out, we're sold out of it. But of course, not the wild agave there. So that's a huge part of it. The other thing about the G4 is it has that creamy texture that is a bit arresting if you're not used to it from the from the wood fermenters. Of course, this is all wood fermenters. But I think part of that difference comes from the fact that G4 is using new oak, whereas these are, you know, quite used. Um, I'm just guessing. Or maybe it has to do with the yeast or the distillation. It's really hard to pinpoint where the differences are there. But um, in any case, uh, that is um, that is key. Yeah, th this is, of course, additive free, uh, the Decadas, and so is the Paladar. Um, I'm not going to show you any additive tequilas here. But um, Siete Leguas is unique. They've been burned in the past by previous partners. And so they're extremely, um, cagey is the wrong word. They're extremely careful with their process and they won't ever certify additive free because they simply don't want to submit themselves to that sort of openness, which I respect. It's fine because we know the family, they, we know what they're doing, nobody's putting any junk in here. They're just doing the same old thing here. Paladar here. This is a little bit more modern, certainly in character. And I am assume 
these will be certified out of fray by, you know, tequila matchmaker going forward if they're not already. Um, so this is lowland fruit from their own fields, slow cooked brick ovens, open air pine box fermenters, proprietary and wild yeast, twice distilled in a blend of copper and stainless. Of course, with agave, you know, you have pretty low, um, pretty low volatile uh, components. So stainless can be a useful uh, tool to retain flavor. Um, and it's not out of the norm to see stainless steel here being used. I probably should have tried this first. It's it's a bit more restrained than than the decadas. Maybe uh, again the oxygen being a big factor here. It does have more roasty peppery notes to start. Less floral. Very clean, a lot of apple. Yeah, if you can find Calle 23 Criollo, that's another great choice. I'd say the big difference between Fortaleza, sorry, lots of questions here, guys. I'm not reading them all out loud. And the Decadas is, well, there are two in terms of production, the source of the agave. Of course, Fortaleza is all lowland, not anymore all estate, but mostly estate with some purchased lowland fruit. And the big difference being the use of the bagasse, the fibers, the agave fibers in fermentation, which is something that Fortaleza doesn't do, which is kind of why Fortaleza is a little bit more restrained in terms of intensity of flavor than someone like Cascoin, which uses fibers in the San Rivales and some of the higher end expressions, maybe not in, or at least not full fiber in the entry level, but there is fiber added. This is pretty clean. It's got a minerally character, peppery, Mm. Quite floral and apple here. Very approachable, easy drinking, classic Lowlander. And uh, I've got a barrel of Paladar coming with Lalo on a horse on the label. I'm obsessed with it. Um, now on to Amatitenya. This is proof that like your distillery doesn't matter so much. Uh, 1477 is what I would call a large, not quite industrial distiller. I don't know per se if they own a diffuser on site, but it is a significant source of number of brands. Unlike Fortaleza, Siete Leguas, or even Paladar at Arete, where they, uh, or, or Elano, where they only produce a couple of labels, um, these guys this distillery makes a huge number of different uh, brands, um, but the you know the good thing about that is you also have a lot of flexibility to do it right. Um, so this is a single field uh, Tahona pressed, wild fermented copper pot distilled full bagasse inclusion, all of the things that we look for in authentic tequila. Made at a larger facility, but to be honest, the place it's made, as long as it's made the proper way, without all the junk. Ooh, you can see all the floaties. I love a good, f those are the fats. It's quite cold in the store in LA today, like less than 60 degrees in the shop. So um, you see a little bit of those fatty oils condensing Oh, you probably can't see it. Oh, yeah, you can. Look at that. I see posts on Reddit all the time. Something wrong with my tequila? No, that's the good stuff. Um, unless it like, looks like a real booger or something like that, you're probably okay. Um, in any case, this is uh, pretty gnarly stuff. I think I got uh, this, uh, this, bo this sample is actually a return from a customer who swore that it was no good. Um, but I disagreed. Um, so, you know, not for everybody to say the least. Oh yes. This is starting to smell kind of like mezcal. 
This is funky. I think it's that wild yeast. Uh, the cousin of the adjectivo brand. Yeah, the adjectivo, which is the ultimate of the adulterated. I mean, I shouldn't say adulterated because I have no information about that. But of the sweet style, heavily oaky uh, uh, brands. Yeah, you can see f f fatty oils, particularly in non-chill filtered uh, bourbons. Good question, Boonskis. Um, cooked with wood fire. Makes it have a slightly smoky element. That's true. Although not like, say, mezcal. Um, still in this, you know, brick ovens here. But yeah, definitely moving into the, you know, ancestral, Sam Rivais sort of character. A lot of I mean, there's some really outrageous flavors in here. There's some peanut, there's some... <sighs> Lots of citrus, huge lime note, smoke behind. More of a oaky wood fire smoke than a mesquite barbecue thing. Mmm. Ooh, it's funky, it's wild, it's intense. It's almost has a bit of like a plastery, that doesn't sound very appealing, but in a good way, like a, like an earthy clay. I think clay is the right way to describe that. that this like almost, mm, um, it's not quite as citrusy on the palate as it might feel on the nose. And, uh, Ah, oh, that's a spicy meatball. That's not gonna be for everybody, right? This is one for the straight up geeks. Way harder to digest than something like the Kadas, which is, I feel like I could give that to my mom and she would appreciate it as well as the biggest tequila geek in the world. Um, again, these love air. So note that. Next on the list, I can't remember if we tasted this. Did I taste this here? Does anybody remember? I feel like I did. I did do that. Now seeing myself look at it. We must have seen this, right? Anyway, I'm gonna drink something. Um, this is more badass shit. Mezcal from a Bell Martinez, Santa Domingo Alvarado. Oh, I tasted this just a few weeks ago. Anyway, I'm gonna have a little bit as we move on to a whole different thing. Um, anyway, if you haven't had this, this is bonkers. Look at that label. God dang, it's good. Uh, so a little interlude. We don't really need to go over that again. So our, my manager, oh God, that's right. You know, the weird lineage between the Amatitenia and the Berilito Bar from, from Abel Martinez, there is some strong flavor crossover here. This is greener. This is more tropical. It's got a little bit more of that. Mm. And much more intense on the palate. Of course, at 51% alcohol, a lot of texture, a lot more colas, a lot more colas in the product. So we're gonna try Soto. This is Luis Carmelo Vasquez Escobedo in Nombre de Dios. Most of the Soto we see out there on the market today is, of course, from Chihuahua, but they are well within their rights in Durango to produce a product of the same name and character. Part of the problem with the DO system in Mexico is that they don't necessarily distinguish between those two products, even though they should be H highly, highly uh, different for so many reasons. But this is all, this is not mezcal or tequila of any kind. This is distilled from a different plant called um, the Desert Spoon or Distillery, dis I can never say it right. 
uh, I actually don't know the varietal here, so I won't say it, but um, there are a number of different types. You see them all over Southern California in the hills, uh, those sort of puffball, agave-ish looking plants. They flower once a year and they are, um, they are more kind of sustainable, I'd say, than agave because you can harvest them and then they kind of just regrow right at the spot where they were they were taken. Although apparently I've recently learned this, you can only do that a couple times before the sugar levels become unsustainable. The yucca plant is not quite right either. Decilerion wellery is the, is the main varietal, although you see other varietals, um, and I'm not sure certain of what this varietal is. It was grown in the wild for 10 to 12 years. Of course, wild plants, you can't say, but that's generally, that's that's the other thing is, you know, with agave, when the quixote goes up, you know it's ready. Uh, thank you for posting that link, Scooter. That's very helpful. Um, with agave, you know when it's ready. You, you, you know when the sugar levels are highest because the quixote comes out. With sotol, it's not the case. It pollinates every year. And um, it's not uh, it, it, it's not necessarily ready just when that quixote comes up because um, uh, it, its life cycle is much much different from the agave plant. In this case, it was harvested and then um, uh, grinded on a electric mill. Uh, I was probably gas mill actually. Time in ovens three days and then just fermented in a blend of stainless steel and s underground uh, oak vats. Quick little two-day fermentation, well water to add. And here we're talking um, a copper pot with a worm tub. Uh, interesting distinction here. Distilled in March of 2022. 20, only 40 liters made, so very, very small production here. If I can get the top open, I'll drink it. That's bottle hey. 40, uh, one of 47 bottles, 51.7% alcohol here. So all the way up here, uh, double distilled on those unusual uh, pot stills. Let's see if we can get this in the shot. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. So we usually think of Sotol as quite gravelly, sandy, earthy. Doesn't typically have the fruit character that a that a, um, agave spirit would have. This is not agave spirit. And this is a whole different world. This is leathery, funky, savory. It's not quite as sandy as some of the Chihuahua stuff is. There is a lot of roasted kind of coffee and roasted beans. Definitely a funky lactic side to it as well. Hmm, this is fun. It's savory, it's leathery, it's, it's uh, I'd say a relatively approachable Sotol in a lot of ways because sometimes that grassy sandiness can be arresting to say the least, but this is, this definitely has a green grassy note to it as well. There isn't that fresh earth thing. Hmm. Ooh, it's quite wild. An intense spicy cinnamon and some red flower, red floral character, almost hibiscus. Not quite, some tamarind. Uh, those Klondike lechuguillas are great. Good call, Steve. Does Kano anything recommend and similar to that? This is 
I mean, this is a different area, but this is in the character of... Well, the electric gears are a little different. Because um, those are agave. We do occasionally get the Klondé stuff, but it's very, very... You know, there are like three or six bottles here and there. So in a general sense, no. I don't have anything like that. Although, this isn't so far off. You might check out some of the Puebla Mezcals, which kind of have some of the similar characters. Some of the Chihuahua Mezcal. Do you think Tecates is similar to 2018 Fuente Seca? Hmm. I think the Decadas is more refined and more complete, maybe. It it takes a step down in terms of power and intensity. Um, the flavors are not very similar in terms of its character. I found that the Fuente Seca to be more grassy and earthy. The Decadas is very, very open and approachable. Um, more citrus, more fruit, more floral character, which is normal because, of course, all of that wild agave is coming from the highlands, a single rancho, whereas Fuente Seca 2018 is, uh, of course, from a plot of Michoacan harvested, uh, cultivated Blue Weber. Yeah, I think it's it, it it's more appealing in some ways than that. And I, I, anybody who's sort of put off by the price, I think probably shouldn't buy it because, t to be honest, if you're not comfortable with expensive white agave spirits, you might be let down because that's just a category that needs its its own audience but uh, if you're a fan of Fuente Seca or even of great mezcal and want to try a true authentic tequila the Decadas exemplifies sort of the difference between great tequila and great mezcal we have a lot of access to great mezcal right now but not so much to great tequila believe it or not despite all the tequila you see out there um, so I think this is a really interesting opportunity to take advantage of that and I don't think there's a better te tequila of any style on the shelf right now, necessarily. <laughs> Chuck, you got it right. First rule of Fuente Seca, shut up. Well, I might say the same thing about Decadas, but I bought a lot, so I'm not going to stop talking about it until it's sold out. Mm. This is good, almost like chocolatey, spicy, mole style chilies and earthy, dark, roasty flavors. That's pretty good. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah, if you're ever going to try Sotol, this is probably a good move, especially if you're coming from Mezcal. This is a little bit more in that character. I love that. Look at that awesome signature. Luis Carmen Vasquez. Escobedo. Badass stuff. Uh, in my opinion, mezcal ruined tequila for me. I agree. Can't get the same amount of complexity and varietal with tequila. No doubt. And and that is kind of the point. You know, the, 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 the whole idea of tequila was to standardize and, um, and uh, you know, and, and uh, commercialize the mezcal. Um, so, you know, that, that works to a point. And of course, you know, we're speaking, I'm speaking, what, to 118 people, mm, pretty good. Uh, but, you know, our market is that seven to 10% of the people that really do want more, more flavor, more intensity, more character than most people. And I, I don't need to appeal to the masses. That's not what we are here to do. We're here to give you the best stuff for the people who really care. And of course, those people who really care are the taste leaders and the, the you know, the thought leaders really in, in, in all this stuff. So three or four years from now, everybody's going to be looking at Amatitenia or Decadas and being like, oh gosh, I wish I could get a bottle of that. But they won't unless they buy it now. And that's 
why you're here. So here we go. Would you recommend Drink Joss for agave lovers who want to take a night off drinking, but are also st but are still looking for <laughs> the spicy botanical essence? I definitely would. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, uh, yes, yes. If you're doing dry January but can't be without some kind of agave-like experience, try that Joss. It's pretty good. Uh, I take it you're not tasting Don Julio 1942 next. No. I did have some the other day. I was with a friend, my neighbor, uh, on his last night in town, he was moving, he sold his house, and we were at a bar saying goodbye, and he had, he, he had never had 1942, and I ordered a shot, which we split, actually three ways, because who needs more than that? But, um, it's pretty good. Man, dang, I couldn't, I mean, sweet, but it tastes pretty good. I don't know what to say. Anybody who says differently is wrong. Um, anyway, La Luna Tequiliana La Two by Sergio Cruz is made with one half Criollo. It's great. Cool. Sounds delish. Uh, what's your favorite Highland Blanco tequila right now? Siete Leguas Decadas. It's delicious. I tasted it here, and I'll taste it again if you make me. Um, anyway, I can't think of a better one. Can you? There aren't many others out there. It's only three or four distilleries. Primo tastes pretty good. Oh, my God. Hey, Pablo's here. That that Milate Espadilla is dope. It's that is the most tequila y mezcal I think we've sold in a long time. Really dig that stuff. Thanks for mentioning it. I think it's still available. Maybe. Yeah, the Dakotas is great. Pablo and I had a glass of this last time I saw him. Cause why not? Maybe that's where some of it went. I'm here for general weekly question. Lydia coming into stock anytime soon. I love when the tequila people come out and don't ask me about Blanton's. Uh, yes, I hope. That was supposed to be here months ago. I think it'll be here soon. I'm hoping to get decent amounts. Love rare character. We all love it. We love Pablo. So easy to love. Wow, this stuff smells great. Mmm. Well, in any case, buy Criollo, Decadas, now or forever hold your peace. We're going to send a big-ass email out. Everybody's going to buy a bunch, and then you're going to be sad that you don't have it. You always tell your favorite spirits with food is mezcal. After a bunch of bottles, I have found that salty, papillometal, single maguey, or malbien white tape are my favorite to sip with a meal. What other mezcals do you recommend with food? Thanks. Scooter, I love, I love that question. You know, I really like high acid mezcal with fatty foods. I also find that mezcal can go with not Mexican foods at all. Like try it with bolognese or your carbonara or something like that. The key is that it's a spirit with acidity, uh, which is so unusual for spirits, which are so often... Uh, designed to avoid that character, um, whether it is, you know, one of those crazy Ricias, Bonate, or Mezonte, or something a little bit more approachable, Malbien, any of those great San Bartolo, great affordable, drinkable mezcals coming out right now. You know, you can't go too far off on that front, um, you know, you can get very specific and say, oh, the Malbien Alto is going to go great with Pastor or, you know, have your morning 
croissant covered in Nutella with, uh, you know, a little bit of Don Mateo, uh, you know, Cupriata or whatever it is. Um, but in general, uh, I'm not too picky necessarily and I'm not uh, so interested about pairing so much mezcal, although there are certain things that work and don't work um, for various regions. You know, if you get something that's very vegetal and green and peppery, that's going to go great with uh, with roast meat and, uh, and uh, other kind of smoky flavors could kind of balance that out. But if you have an agave spirit that is sweeter, you might find that it is great with dessert uh, or with chocolate. Um, and uh, those are, you know, awesome ways to use those products. Um, but yeah, I don't think too much about the pairing unless I'm looking for very specific flavors to not clash or meld nicely. Um, but in a general sense, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm liking mezcal and, and tequila, more flavorful, traditional tequilas with, you know, have it with a hamburger, loves fat, anything with a little bit of fat, you're just gonna kill. Taking 2023 off from buying new bottles, that's terrible news. Any chance you could have me win a few very specific bottles, Boonski. If you're not going to buy this year, definitely not. But good try. Did you did you do a tasting of the Aman, Amagi Japanese rums? I don't think I did. Did I do that here? You know, I have a six-year-old. I don't have memories. I don't know why, but it's just not working properly. So maybe... Las Perlas Costa Wild Angustophilia Rhodocantha Ricea. Ooh, that's a great question. I do like that product. I need to reorder that. Yeah, that's good stuff. Big fan. Big fan of Las Perlas and all of those uh, those uh, Jalisco spirits. <sighs> Mike's going to take over. <laughs> uh, I, I'm glad you did get the Amagis. Yeah, that was an Andrew Whiteley original. Uh, I think one of the craziest things he's ever done, and thank God he did it, because it is so special. But that guy stepped up and bought every single drop of this rum without thinking about how crazy that was, and now everybody's in love with it. It's going to be a legend. Amagi rum. It will be one and done. Don't wait. Grab it now. I like the 3098 and the 3752. It's so different from each other. They're both very, very good. But 3098 right now is my favorite. 3762 is all sold out. Well, can ever L ever be reordering any Sotoleros when they become available, Steve? We buy all that stuff as soon as it's available. There's a new... Um, Guerrero Mezcal coming from Heavy Metal Spirits, same stuff. Uh, Chuck has had the Tequila Yeno Sassanac. I special ordered that a long time ago. I have, still haven't tasted it. So for a whiskey drinker, which tequila would you recommend? I currently have a bottle of Tears of Urona, but want to try something completely different. Well, that's a tough call. Um, I would say... You know, start familiarizing yourself with the, the Blancos. Try Decadas and see what good, proper, high-quality sipping Blanco tastes like. Oh, almost lost you there, guys. And then go from there. The other brands you want to look at, if you can find it, although we just got in some, it's going to be gone for, they, they told me, two to three years. The Tapatio Excelencia is very different from the... Um, from the Tears of Verona, uh, it's all first and second fill bourbon as opposed to scotch, sherry, and cognac barrels. So very, very different flavor profiles. Uh, highly recommend that. Um, but if you want to stick in there, uh, we do have some Caballito, Sorero, Blanco, and Añejo coming. So keep an eye out for that. I have just a handful of bottles. We're talking six, seven bottles of each. It's 
It's kind of silly. They're very expensive, of course. Do other categories get any surprises from the Sazerac Disto transition? What do you mean, Brent? Um, so Siete Leguas will no longer be with Republic National Distributors. That's going to be with their new Sazerac distributor, of course. So will Glenn Farkless, uh, I imagine. Um, who knows? You know, you know, when these sorts of things happen, some of those contractual obligations change. So you might see Glenn Farkless go the other way and leave Sazerac. I think that would be pretty unusual, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, obviously, there are contracts involved. Big Shanto, don't worry. I get I I posted right after. So you can watch the whole thing. No giveaways today, guys. I got no. There's no bourbon. No bourbon for you. I'm sorry. Bye, Decadas. Tapatia Excelencio is sold out already. Well, there's more coming. We have another, I think, ten or twenty cases, and then they're saying gone for two to three years. So that's a bummer. But so it goes. Mmm. 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 Oh my God, Decadas, so good. Well, that's, uh, I like Montegave. I wish there was, do we have some in, in stock? The Bordeaux notes are very subtle. The red fruit notes are there, but they're very, very pointed and subtle. Montegave is a, is a Cascoine distillate that's been finished for just a few weeks in red wine casks. Via, via, via Lobos, Los Hombres ever coming back? Yeah, I've been working with their importer trying to make it work again. So that's, Definitely something we'd look at. Have you tried the Rittenhouse KNL pick? No, total surprise. Couldn't believe that showed up. Um, it's supposed to be really good. It's gonna sell out though, so don't wait too long. It's not a huge commitment. Tequila mezcal sessions are truly the best. Oh, tall guy, I couldn't agree more. I concur. And you guys are the best. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me while I enjoy a bunch of tequila. And um, thank you for, you know, all your support. What are your thoughts on the Weller and other Buffalo Trace finished tequilas? Most likely a gimmick, right? Well, I mean, I wouldn't pay a whole lot extra for it. The Añejos, I think, are pretty good, but, you know, fresh, first fill bourbon tequila in general is sort of rare. And, uh, um, you know, I think gimmick's the wrong word, uh, but, uh, yeah, you're not too far off. I mean, they're pretty good. We have a barrel of Weller that's aging right now in Corazon. Um, it's gonna do one year in Corazon. I think it's gonna be like less than 50 bucks. I guarantee you it's going to be delicious. Um, so that's not a gimmick. That's just good tequila in a good barrel. It's going to make good a good bottle. So voila. Look at this. JB Gummy thinks Widow Jane Ocho is delicious. So there you go. What can you say? Whether it's worth 30 bucks more than the regular Reposado, I think, is a matter of taste. But certainly I'll, I'll, I'll sell plenty more of it. And uh, we'll be back next week. I don't know what we're going to do next week. It'll be something fun for sure. Maybe rum. Hmm. Nobody cares. Rum? Hmm? 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 Bourbon. Oh, you know what we did get, which you guys should buy? The Copper and Craft 9 years old. Those are pretty cool. Mike likes Corazon. That's all that counts. And was the winner of the Handy Announce? It was. It's Chris. There he is. There he is. Look at him. Cheers. You do have to buy Decades now. You owe me, Chris. No, just kidding. You don't have to buy anything. I I, I don't need help selling the Decades, honestly. I just like it a lot. Uh, Chuck's in for rum. Widow Jane, higher proof, made price easier to justify. Good call, JP Gummy. Good note. That is an important factor. Scotch? Ooh, Mike, I don't have too much new scotch, but I do like drinking scotch. There's no fun Armagnac right now, unfortunately. Rumple stilt skin. That seems like a bad choice. Oh, I'm supposed to shut up on the copper and craft. That's good whiskey. 75 bucks. Nine year old MGP. Come on. Did you try the 2022 Four Roses limited edition? No. Someone 
Oh, was it you, Devin? Did you? Yeah, no, I haven't tasted it yet, brother. I'm so sorry. But thank you for that. Did you get a taste of the Grandeur Batch 11? I think we're on 12, but no, I didn't get to taste it. I'll check out Caballito Serrero. Yes, those are wonderful. Check out the Blancos. The Añejos are wildly expensive, but delicious. Ocho's Puntas is gone. Done and done. I only had a couple of cases sold out in seconds. You guys still have any single barrel or case study bottles available? Uh, Mizunara. Yes, Frank August asking about whether there's any Mizunara oak. There is the regular Frank August gone right now, coming back soon. Single barrel sold out. Spay malts on their way. I Real fr rats, fr rats of frats. That's a tough story, but yes, technically there is a... Oh, my wife's here. Fire, fire, fire. I love you, baby. Um, try the new Great House? No, but I heard it was freaking fire. You should do a tasting of all cheap stuff that distributors makes you buy. You know what's funny? Som Q Kansi. Nobody can make me buy anything. We don't stock Fireball. We don't stock cr Screwball. And I don't think it's a very funny joke. But that would be funny. I don't like to disparage people. But I'm not going to buy that stuff or taste it here. Although I appreciate the wonderful sense of humor. Uh, current price for 1990 Armagnac is killer. Yes, that's true. We do have that. But I've tasted that here before. Oh, thanks, Keith. Is this Mexican wine? No. It's no? Manitou Salon. Oh, Manitou, my favorite. Mmm. It smells a little oaky. What is it? Uh, you mean, who is it? Who is it? It's a producer called Renaissance. They're, it's uh, all done in stainless steel with, uh, and then brought up uh, in, like, larger, like, 500 liter. Fooders? barrels, yeah. But it's got a lot of spice. Yeah, it's a spicy bomb. I like that. And my wife's a huge supporter. You should do a cask of yourself. <laughs> oh, yes. She's the best. I'm always cast strength. We are hiring for sales associates in multiple locations. Check the website out. Crossover episode. Drinking wine. This smells awesome, Keith. Are we? Do we own this? Mm, we, well, I was waiting to see if you liked it. So, yeah, we're going to buy it. It's not as like high toned and and intense as some of the other minute too. Mm. You still taste wine after all that biz. Mm. Not really. <laughs> smells great though. Wait till you try the uh, the new Code Rouenais Gamay's. Ugh, I can't wait. Your mind. Semi carbonic MA from the Code Rouenais. That's the real deal, guys. Yeah. Always cast strength. All right. If you love tequila, you'll love that. <laughs> Keith knows how, how to market his products. Uh, no big boy. Oh, the big ball bottle was announced. Chris is the winner. Um, that's all I got, guys. Unlikely scooter, but you never know. You never know. Is there any public update about the potential new LA spot on the west side? Working on it. Working on it, guys. In the, in, as soon as licensing goes through then we can i can start talking about it all right but it won't be in century city i guarantee that that's 100 percent not happening thank you brett be well guys thanks so much see you next week ciao